So, a quick programming note. I'm going to do this video twice. I have a board. I'm going to do this on paper, and then I'm going to do it on the board, and then we're going to see which one we like the best. And then I may redo it again, because that's what I do. So, if you think about where we've gone so far, we've done a lot of stuff. Uh, and in particular, we have the momentum principle, uh, which I could write as this. F net equals the change in momentum over the change in time, which you could also write as mass times acceleration. And if I did that for, let's say, a box on an incline, like this, then I would draw the forces like this, mg, let's just let's say no friction, n. Now, the thing is that I drew those forces all acting at a point in the center of the object. And that's not really the way things work. Um, imagine this, so suppose I have a box sitting on a table. That's good enough. And so I have the downward gravitational force, I have the upward normal force, and those two forces are equal. So this is at, at equilibrium. But now, what if I did this? Well, let me, let me draw it like this, and let me do it with this. So suppose I have a pencil, and I push on both sides, it stays there. What if I push with the same forces over here? Something happens, right? So it does matter where you push on this pencil. Even with one force, if I push in the middle, what if I push up here? Something different happens. So the location of the force matters, and this is what we're dealing with when we, when we talk about things called rigid objects. So a rigid object doesn't itself move, but it has dimensions. And so now I need to talk about where that force applied and what matters. So clearly if I push right here, it's going to be different than if I push right there. If I push at an angle, it's going to be different than if I push at this angle. So these things matter, and this is what we call torque. Okay, now you may have had torque in your normal traditional physics textbook, and they may have said something like this. Torque, we use the Greek letter tau, is equal to R perpendicular F, which is equal to uh, R F perpendicular, which is equal to uh, R times F times sine of theta. That's fine, okay? That's fine, and, I'm, I'm, and that's not wrong. It's just not the whole story. Uh, so what this says is that the torque on about this point due to this force depends on three things. It depends on uh, the magnitude of that force, it depends on how far that force is applied from the point of rotation, and it depends on the angle between those two. So if I look at this R perpendicular F, that's really this. If I draw a line like that, and I don't use this R, I use this R. That's the perpendicular distance. Or I could use the, perpen the normal R, and I could use this component of, actually my theta is wrong. Theta should be this. Sorry, that's theta. Um, I'm going to think for a second. I think that's right, because sine theta, yeah. Okay, so, and that would be, this component would be R sine theta, okay. Uh, and then I could just use the magnitude of R and the magnitude of F and the, and the angle between them. Now, in normal terms, we would say the torque about that point. It does matter where your point is. Uh, also, normally we would say if you have a torque equal to a positive number, then that would mean it is rotating uh, counterclockwise. And if the torque is negative, that would mean clockwise. And this doesn't matter because it, as long as you pick something and, it, and you stick with it, you're cool. Okay, now let me tell you the real thing. Torque is a vector. Really, the definition of torque looks like this. So this is what's called the cross product. And the cross product is kind of complicated, I admit that. Uh, but the thing is that the torque is going to be a vector perpendicular to both R and F. 
So there's only two vectors that are perpendicular to both R and F, and that's one of them is this way out of the paper, and the other one's this way into the paper. So that makes it a three-dimensional situation uh, by default, and that's why people just use this counterclockwise and clockwise, which I'll probably mostly use. I'm just telling you this because I do want, we will get to a part where you have to see that torque is a vector, okay? Um, it's not the direction that the thing would rotate or not rotate, it's, a, it's in the axis of rotation either that way or that way. And then you would find the direction if, if it's either this way or that way using the right-hand rule, which I'm not gonna cover right now. But what is torque? That's how you count. So, and I can also calculate it this way. The, the magnitude of a cross product is equal to the magnitude of R times the magnitude of F times the sine of the angle between them. And remember this uh, is similar to the dot product where I said the work is F dot delta R, which is the magnitude of F times the magnitude of delta R times the cosine of the angle between the two vectors. But this gives me a scalar value. This gives me a vector value, so I need to take the magnitude of it. So, but what is torque? I mean, if you think about torque if you think about force as a, something that can change the momentum of an object, uh, torque is something that changes the rotation of an object. And we're not going to deal with the rotations at first. We're going to deal with equilibrium situations. But that's the first introduction of torque. Oh, I should say units. What units does this have? It has units of meters times newtons. So newton meters. Okay. That's a good introduction to torque. I'm going to do this again, but I'm going to use my board, and you tell me which one you like better.